Welcome to Ferrotone Studios. A couple of years ago, I bought a DIY distortion pedal kit. Uh, it's actually the DIY Distortion 2 kit, which is probably like a Boss DS2, that's my guess, because that's it said DS2 on the description on the website. It was about £19, uh, the price is still about the same. It comes with a little box, I can't remember what these boxes are called, but loads of pedals come in this size container. It's not pre-drilled, I probably should have bought a pre-drilled one, but I wasn't thinking at the time, but I'll spray that whatever colour I feel like. Comes with a pack of all the bits, including a PCB, um, all the parts, knobs, well, just everything really. So yeah, I am going to build that and we will see how it goes. Right, I've had a look at the instructions. This tells you everything goes. I think it gives you a list of parts, you know, it's got a few bits. I mean, this, each component, it tells you where it goes. And in case that's not good enough, it tells you on the PCB. So you can see exactly where everything goes. Should be pretty self-explanatory. Most of the parts are obvious, like the switch and the pots, parts like that. The less obvious parts, the bits that I sometimes struggle with, are the resistors. Now, you can read the resistance of a resistor by starting at one band on one side and moving across the other side. However, I found that it's not always clear which side to start on, so it could have a different resistance. But luckily with these, they've labeled them, so should be no problems. Um, I'm gonna get started um, and get through this, and in the background's gonna be music from this pedal, and that's on the assumption that it works. If it doesn't work, you'll listen to silence or some other thing. Wish me luck. Resistors first, because it's easy to go with the lowest components and then end up with the tallest ones, otherwise just stuff gets in the way. It's just the last few parts to go, so the LED, well, the longer leg is a positive leg, the three pots, it does tell you how to label them, so I'm going to get a sharpie and label them D, T and V for distortion, tone and volume, because each leg has to be wired in a specific place. Um, the battery, I mean that's positive, it's red, that's simple. The jacks, input and output the same and it tells you where to wire them. Um, the power power sorry so the DC jack so it's just just the fiddly bits left and then I'm gonna do the switch last just because well that bit can be a bit of a pain because if I put that in the way then it's hard to get to the other bit so I'll leave that bit to last let's go for it
it works. And now I'm gonna drill some holes in this so that, well, otherwise it's just a load of cables on a PCB. So yeah, do that, drill a load of holes, make sure it all fits, then start spraying it, let the spray dry, and then plug it in and use it. Welcome back, the case is blue. I'm going to uh, fit the three knobs, I can't remember what they are, volume, tone and gain probably, on here, and then use tape to mark out where to put the, the, the labels, I suppose. And I'm gonna write above them, you know, what the knobs do. Gonna use, <laughs> I can't think of a more high-tech way of doing it, so I've bought, ow, a stencil, and I'm gonna use a Sharpie. So I'm just gonna write on it. So this will be labelled. And when that's done, I'm gonna lacquer it and then put it all together. Then we'll see how it sounds.
Turns out this is actually a pretty good pedal. I did make a considerable number of mistakes though. One of them, the main one I would say, is drilling the uh, hole for the power at the wrong end of the pedal. Don't know what I was thinking, I didn't even realise until the last minute when I was assembling it, and I was like, oh, why? Another thing that was stupid, drilled all these holes at the top, the same size, forgetting that the LED hole is smaller, so that's why it's got a washer on it, because the LED just goes through the hole. Fail. What else did I do that's stupid? After labelling it all, it looked fantastic, I lacquered it, still looked amazing, and then came back to it the next day, it was about, I don't know, one or two degrees centigrade, or Celsius, whatever you want to call it, in the uh, shed. Should have brought it into a warm room or left it longer, so the finish was still tacky, I thought, It'll be fine. Uh, totally ruined it. It's just covered in fingerprints that have now dried, so it's permanently going to look like this. It looks absolutely, I mean, it looks like I've had it about 30 years. It looks like it was like the first pedal ever invented. However, it does sound good and it does work. So I may use it, I may not. One other thing, actually, the tone knob. When you turn the tone all the way down, the tone's all the way up, and when you turn the tone all the way up, it sort of turns it down. So that's clearly backwards. Did double check the instructions and I have wired it correctly. I can easily swap the label, the label, the cable over. Um, whether or not I can be bothered is another story. Learned a lot from this. Uh, I have made pedals before and I can't believe I made that many errors, but got a fancy pedal coming in the future, Clon Clone. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be a hilarious video. Um, yeah, keep an eye out. And also watch the video of how I made the backing track, so half the backing track for in this video is the bit you've just seen a minute ago and I'll, I'll put it at the end, why not? And the rest of the backing track, so the bit that isn't as familiar, is in another video where I just do a bit more on this and just layer up another song. So keep an eye on that, I'll put a box at the end in a minute. So yeah, thanks for watching. Obviously like, subscribe, hit the bell, tell everyone and then tell them to tell everyone. Just let everyone know. Thanks for watching. Make some pedals. Great.